this episode is sponsored by my two patrons, Wex Text and Kaizo Tom. Uh, since they are my current two patrons, they have been uh, they have been supporting me in an, in a massive way. Thank you so much, Battlemaster. Oh my god. Ah, I was full oh. back in my chair. Yo. <laughs> uh this this episode is also sponsored by Battlemaster D20. Um also the next episode is is sponsored by Battlemaster D20. Thank you so much, man. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Can I get some hearts in chat for for Battlemaster? Thank you, thank you so much. It it means the world to me. I'm so glad that you're enjoying the show and and uh and and like watching us do our crazy uh demigod shenanigans it means the world to me thank you so much what happened i don't have chat open uh battle master gifted 20 subs yo so 22 very so tall. far <laughs> thank you thank you thank you thank you a million times 22 times thank you um what a sugar mod right right <laughs> uh i can't say <laughs> i'm gonna send feed pics uh but <laughs> no, i'm just kidding uh, hey, yo. Hey, yo. <laughs> Suddenly I'm gifting 20. Hello. <laughs> no, no, I got hammer toes. You don't want to see those. They're all like bent up. Eh, it's not good. <laughs> <laughs> all right. We're going to get rolling. God damn it. Um, we're going to get rolling on, uh, on Dungeons and Dragons today. Uh, thank you so much uh, again, Battlemaster, and to my two amazing subs, uh, Wex and Kaizo. So. Uh, last time we left off in the story, you had all made it to a city called Cliffhaven. You were looking around for information, uh, getting ready for your trek to the um, mountain range, uh, kind of in the eastern part of the uh, continent, uh, like northeastern part of the continent, looking for um, a way to find uh, Jinx's character, Shisa, uh, her parents' artifact, the harp of vivian and uh you spent some time in cliffhaven which is a coastal city that was kind of near where you came up out of the water um you were down in the underwater kind of atlantic city of su uh su wow Ooh. surori uh and uh uh you accidentally sunk that city uh by <laughs> letting your location be known to the big bad but that's okay, because he couldn't actually come down there and do anything about it. He sent one of his lackeys, who you uh, beat the shit out of, and uh, cast a moonbeam on and found out he was a shapeshifter. Um, so, uh, crazy things have been happening. Um, to sum it all up, you're looking for information on how to find the Harp of Vivian, which all you know is the rumor is that it was housed in a temple at the top of a mountain, and a group of cloud giants came and smashed the temple and took the Harp up into their... Uh, giant city in the sky so um if that's the case you've got uh, quite the journey ahead of you um but first you got to go to the temple the last place it was known and see if they uh if there's any traces of where you could go uh last we left off crocus had spotted some strange kind of musical folks across in the tavern that in uh, here in cliffhaven and uh, you met them their names were terry and terry too one of them was a uh, human and the other one was a kenku and uh, they kind of had like this musical duet thing going on. And having talked with them uh, and call, uh, calling Shisa over uh, to meet them as well, they uh, they seem to recognize Shisa. They seem to know her, um, maybe not like besties, you know, but just known her from their travels. She used to work in a tavern herself, Shisa, and they used to just be people that uh, would come through and uh, classic your classic bards that would come through and... Um, the kind of people who you would uh, talk music with and talk about their adventures and one of those kinds of people that inspired you to uh, to come out here in the first place and, and take that step away, along with the, the push of being a demigod. But um, those kinds of people that uh, in your past, Shiso, would uh, would give you that like hope that there's more out there than, than what you're doing now. Um, and so uh, we are going to have that conversation and that reuniting of Terry, Terry 2, and uh, Shisa and uh, even Shisa will learn some more about uh, their relationship as we go. Uh, and then along with that, uh, the last thing to note is uh, last time you did pick up a new friend. So don't forget about him. Uh, you've got your hermit crab, uh, Fergus. Uh, so just be careful. He's uh, riding along on your belt in a cage that you, uh, you found. You've really got to 
avoid those large AoE attacks uh, at this point, because uh, if he dies, you lose your luck point. But he does give you luck. He is like the little uh, the little cricket from Mulan. He, he's amazing. So we pick up in the tavern as I play the music. All right. Voices chattering around. Nobody seems to uh, really pay any mind to this uh, moment that's happening. Shisa, as you kind of slither over away from Fergus and the rest of the uh, band who uh, are all drinking, you make your way over to Terry and Terry too. Terry is a human with these kind of green tattoos that come up his neck and onto his face. They look like skull, uh, like uh, skeleton hands, and they kind of curl around his cheeks. Um, he's got a, a brown top knot that he kind of keeps back in a in a ponytail. Um, if you were to let it down, it'd kind of be a, a medium length uh, mane that would kind of come down to his shoulders. He's got earrings all along from the top of his ears all the way down to the bottom. The bottom ones kind of dangle down, and they're a pair of dice that uh, kind of jingle uh, with a, a sheen to them. And uh, he, when he smiles, you see he's got one golden tooth that is his fang on his left side. Uh, that he, he gives a big smile as he sees you, Shisa, and you instantly recognize him as someone about your age, um, someone who uh, came through the tavern at one point was just uh, a random, like, patron, just someone who liked to play music and got a few coins here and there from playing in your tavern, someone who you may or may not, you can decide, may or may not have been, uh, you know, someone, like, friendly with or, or have talked to. Uh, gotten to know you can decide how much you think you would know terry and terry too you know of them or you can say commander i know them really well we're we're like we go way back kind of thing you can let me know however you feel about it, and i'll give you however much information you want but um terry gives you a big smile because he recognizes you a friendly face and uh the kenku he just kind of nods at you he's always been kind of stoic and um not as not as animated as the human uh, but he comes up to you, Shisa, um, the, the human comes up, and, uh, he goes up for a big high five. He goes, Shisa, beautiful! He, uh, he's going in for a high five. What do you do? I high five him back, and I say, wow, I wasn't expecting to see you two here. Um, well, what are you, what are you guys doing here? What's, what's happened since we've, since I've been gone? Tell me everything. He, uh, he gives you this big grin, and he says, Come on, come on over. Yeah, let's talk, let's talk. Oh, come on. Drink, drink, bartender, drink. And, uh, I the... think, uh, sorry, I wanted to establish the relationship because you were talking about that earlier. Yes, but I think the thing is, like, I'm very friendly with them, and, like, they would come into the bar pretty often, and, like, we would, like, like just, like, have fun while we were drunk together, but, like, I don't really know that much about them. Like, that we were just, perfect. like, you know. So they're, like, patrons buddies. that, they're, like, regulars, uh, almost. Yeah. Like, people who you would be friendly with, uh, you would consider exactly. more than just acquaintances, someone who you consider friendly, but not your friend. Not, like, someone who you would, you know... Yeah, like, call to help me move right, or something. Right, right. Exactly. Okay. Yeah, that sounds perfect. So, um, they, uh, they, they bring you over to the table. The uh, goblin bartender who, uh, or, sorry, barmaid, who has been kind of coming around, uh, she goes... Uh, what can I get everyone? Um, drinks over here. And Terry says, uh, Do you all drink anything in particular? Uh, can, something I can get for you? Uh, it's been a while, she said, the same as always. Uh, whatever your same is. Uh, yeah, I'll just have an ale. He uh, kind of winks at the uh, barmaid and she nods her head. And then, uh, Crocus, are you drinking anything? Crocus is so fucking drunk, Crocus. <laughs> Water. <laughs> he he, uh, he says, uh, make that two waters because he's been drinking way too much. And you look at the Kenku who's like looking at the ceiling going, prrr, prrr. Yeah, uh, buddy. He's like nodding back and forth. Ter Terry too looks a little, a little stoned. Um, and uh, Terry says, and for me, uh, a couple shots, uh, please. Just uh, whatever you've got, something crazy, uh, something that's fruity. And uh, the, the barmaid kind of nods her head, and she goes in the back. Um, as she's gone, the conversation continues uh, as he says, uh, Catching up, catching up, yes. Um, wow, it's been a while. Um, I, we haven't been uh, in your neck of the woods in years. It's been at least three years. Um, you look... He kind of, like, looks you up and down in a, a confused way, and he, he's like, You look... You look 
like an adventurer. You look like you've been out seeing everything. I mean, look at you. Uh, he, he kind of like uh, has a big smile on his face and he goes, so you finally got away from all that shit. Well, I finally found some people that I think are are pretty cool. Um, I mean, not not that everybody else back where I'm where we're from aren't cool, but I just well, of course not. I feel like a, a lot of people aren't willing to pack up and just go and adventure and live life the way that it comes at them. And these people that I've met, they're just just like me. It's amazing. Of course, and uh, it looks like you're very happy. Who are you here with? Just Crocus? <laughs> yeah, I, I point over to Crocus. I'm like, the really drunk one over there, that's Crocus. And then the slightly less drunk one over there, that's Fergus. They kind of look back and see the the kobold, which is all the way across the bar. And uh, um, he Terry kind of looks at you and he goes, do you want to come over? We can all have a, a, a big shindig together. I mean, sure, go ahead. I mean, I, I turn my head over and I yell super loud for both of them. So Crocus is still kind of nearby, getting the water from uh, from the barmaid who's bringing it to her first. Crocus is like holding it very <laughs> gently because so, it's very full. <laughs> I think Crocus would hold it like <laughs> <laughs> double double handing it. Uh, Fergus, <laughs> Shisa calls you from across the bar. Are you wanting to come over? Or are you wanting to stay with the band and get more information off them? No, I'll I'll come over. Okay, so Fergus, uh, you make your way over, kind of having to push through the crowd of people. There's a lot of people in here, and you're kind of small, so having to kind of push past some of them. Some of them are like, whoa, watch it, man, like as you're pushing past, but, uh, you know, it's just classic bar talk. Um, yeah. Did you want to do anything on your way over? I know you're kind of a sneaky type. Um. Yeah, I, I'll, I'll feel some people's pockets, and if anyone's got, like, a... Uh... A big juicy pocket. I'll try and pickpocket them. Okay. Uh, as you're kind of walking by, um, let's do a perception check first, and then depending on what your perception check is, we'll see if there's anything you think is worth stealing. Uh, with a 17, uh, kind of looking around and just kind of feeling around uh, appropriately, you uh, pat some people's pockets, <laughs> and um, you pat one of the uh, patrons' pockets, and as you do, you hear a jingle that sounds, with that 17, it sounds very particular. It sounds like the jingle of... Um, platinum pieces which are uh worth a pretty penny one platinum piece is 10 gold yeah i'll pickpocket him for all he's got all right let's do a sleight of hand check okay uh 16 let me roll here okay um you slide your hand into the pocket as you're walking by it kind of trails behind you as you're pulling out what you can um you get a uh, kind of in your hurry you grab a uh, key ring that's got two brass keys on it and five pl pieces of platinum so that is 50 gold and um, a little key ring that's got two brass keys that's kind of hooked onto your pinky finger as you're dragging it out of their pocket yeah alright okay. you make it over to the group um having kind of pocketed the, those things and nobody nobody seems to notice. Um, and Terry, the human, he goes, Good to meet you, mate. Hey, welcome, welcome. Drinks? You, have you been drinking? Yeah, mate, I've been drinking, but I'm uh, taking it easy for now as I don't want to end up uh, like my, my good pal over here and I kind of pat Crocus on the back. Of course, look at you. Very responsible, very responsible. <laughs> he, he kind of smiles. Um, so... She said, these are your new friends, and you said they, they've inspired you to come out adventuring, yeah? I mean, not so much as inspired, but we didn't really, I mean, we did have a choice in the matter, but I didn't really feel that way. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm getting deep. Uh, wh okay. What I mean to Adventure was calling you, right? It was just, it was just yeah. is that what you mean? Or? Yes. Um... Go ahead and roll me a deception check real quick. <laughs> I don't want to be all sad while everybody's all drunk. I forgot. <laughs> a deception check? Yeah, deception. Yeah, with a 19, he's uh, he kind of smiles and he says, uh, well, they sound like a great group of people. Very good. Um, well, uh, to those of you who don't know, I'm Terry and this is Terry too. And he, to the Kenku, the Kenku is now... Uh, Kind of plucking, he like plucks one of his own feathers and puts it in his beak, and he goes, 
mm, I'm a farmer. And he kind of like, he's like going back and forth. He's like wobbling. Uh, and uh, <laughs> the uh, Terry, the human says, um, he can only mimic things that he's heard uh, before. So uh, uh, his speech is a bit limited, but um, if you're interested in, in asking him anything, feel free. He's, he's, not, um, he's not helpless in any way. He's just not much of a talker. Um, it, it was Crocus who you noticed uh, his his uh, armband, his, his bracelet, uh, the, uh, the pretty. symbols. So pretty, pretty bird. <laughs> yes, um, the symbols of Vivian, and then uh, Crocus immediately called you over. Um, Shisa, apparently you have some connection with uh, Vivian in, in, in a way that makes you interested. Uh, take a look. And uh, Terry, too, the Kenku puts his arm out, and you see this kind of black um, onyx sheened bracelet on his uh, wrist and forearm. It kind of travels up the side of it. It's got uh, beautiful music notes and a harp in the middle, um, which are the, the signs of Vivian. I'm uh, I'm just going to be like, well, I was just wondering if uh, you, if you knew more about Vivian. My knowledge is uh, somewhat limited, but I'm um... We uh, we went to one of the churches, um, kind of an old abandoned place, uh, but they've turned it into a bit of a, a tourist attraction. Um, and uh, there were some priests there who were selling merch, and uh, this is one of the, the pieces that they were selling. Uh, I don't even think it's uh, real real onyx, and he kind of taps it a little bit, and you can tell it's it's kind of got a, a plasticky feel to it. Now that you're getting a good look at it. Oh my god. <laughs> Yeah, it's, I mean, it's this old very... rundown church. It's destroyed, completely rubble. And uh, there's these priests outside that claim to be priests of uh, Vivian, and uh, they were selling merch and uh, doing tours and all that. Oh, this this doesn't sound right. That that sounds strange. Right? Yeah. I, I mean, um, most people don't even believe in Vivian. I mean, it's just... it's just like it's just like from before. I mean, I'm so confused. Um, so you you don't you really uh, where was this where was this church you're talking about? Um, if you go straight east from here, it's about mm, three or four days travel. Um, you'll find the mountain range, and uh, there's actually signs that lead to it. It's uh, quite the tourist attraction, yeah. Hmm. Well, I'd have half a mind to go check it out myself. If if you so are inclined, I mean, uh, there's plenty of things to do on the way, I'm sure, and. Um, when you get there, you know, make sure you bring money because everything's expensive. It's a tourist attraction, so. You might even say it's a bit of a tourist trap. I mean, there, there wasn't much to, much to see there. And they, they kept, they kept looking at everyone. They were looking everyone up and down, like, like, it was, it was kind of creepy. We didn't like the vibes. It was like, they were looking at us, like, eyeing us up and down, like, sizing us up. It was strange. Did, uh, was there anything else very noticeable about them? Um, the priests in particular. Oh. Uh, with an 18 history check, uh, he kind of like raises an eyebrow and, and um, strokes his chin a little bit and he goes, I mean, the priests, they, they were, um, they weren't that concerned with teaching anything about Vivian. It was more so they were just concerned with selling things. Um, and their robes seemed... Uh, uh, cheap, uh, like they were not um, not official in any way. You know what I mean? It's like they didn't even try. Yeah, I I'm so upset with this because earlier we came across a church that was quite similar. Almost, it was a different god, and they were doing almost the exact same thing, seemingly selling the merch of a god that they don't care about. Hmm. Do you remember which god? Uh, that one was. Lytropius. Mm, which one's Lytropius again? Uh, I'm not very good with the gods and everything. The god of the sea, silly. Oh. Interesting. Hmm. You know, on my travels, I've also seen all kinds of people doing this in markets and places all around. Um, people just uh, pretending to be, uh, you know, um, devout. But you can tell, just, they, go, they have a feel about them. It just seems like it's something, something's off. Like, even, I was traveling through the countryside, right? And on the side of a dirt path, there was this, like, it looked like a farmer's market. But And when you came there, everything was, was modeled after, um, 
Moira. Everything had Moira's name on it. Oh, it's Moira this, Moira that. I mean, it was pathetic. It was like they were trying to sell it on the name of Moira. This is Moira coin, and this is Moira carrots, and Moira fucking flowers. It was, it was like they were, they were using her name to try and sell their things. Um, it's very strange. I wonder if this is all connected, or if it's just a bunch of scummy fuckers trying to get money. It has to be. Who knows? It's been so many years, over a hundred years since even there were any rumors of gods even existing. I mean, barely anybody remembers or believes in them. Uh, these generations that we live in now, I mean, you, you talk to an elf or you talk to um, uh, maybe a turtle or someone who's lived for a long time, and maybe they could give you some more insights, but I mean, even when the gods are, are, are supposedly walk the earth, I mean, they barely interacted with anybody, so, um, you know, as, as worship and things die out, I guess snakes and uh, he he kind of looks at you. He goes, "Oh, sorry, um, snakes. I, I meant uh, liars and um, you know, people people who are distrustful." Um, he kind of looks nervous. Gods, I didn't I didn't mean anything about the snake thing. No worries. The gods have a funny way of uh, not being good at proving themselves to us when they could so easily do it. Well, I mean, the rumor is that they're all trapped away inside you know relics or whatever. Like, so even if they could, they or even if they. Um, had the ability, uh, they're trapped away. They, they wouldn't be able to show us anything, right? So, who knows? Uh, I like to believe there's at least one free god out there. Maybe. Um, you know, I don't know. Things have just been kind of going to shit uh, recently uh, around a lot of these parts. I mean, so many cities, are, they look like they're just devoid of... of um, true happiness. It's like everyone's just looking out for themselves. Nobody cares about anybody anymore. Last time I rolled through your place, um, it's just like the monarchy in your area was just so... Ugh. Ugh. You know? It's like they didn't even care. It's either people want to live or they want to survive. And I come from a place where only they only care about surviving and they don't care about actually being happy or experiencing things and I learned from a young age that that's not that's not how you're supposed to live he kind of gives a gentle smile the Kenku is now laid back onto the table and is sleeping um and uh, the barmaid comes back the goblin and she says and here are your drinks hello here are you. and she kind of like passes him out he lifts up his shot and uh kind of goes in for a um a toast with you she's uh, and he says Here's two experiences and actually living for not just ourselves, but for anyone who might need it. That's a great thing to cheers to. <laughs> he uh, chinks glasses with you and um, downs his shot. He uh, smiles gently at you and the rest of the group, and uh, he says, So, uh, you're planning on going to in that direction then? Because we're going the opposite direction. I guess so. I mean, that's the only lead I have. Lead? For, uh, you have something in particular you're looking for? Or? I thought you were just curious. I want to get to the bottom of this Vivian thing. You know, rumor has it. There's a harp. Oh. Yes. Oh, they, I mean, that's something they were talking about. Oh, the, the, um, the fake priests, you know, they were just like, oh, the harp this, the harp that. They had all kinds of stories, and they were... They even had merch you could buy shitty little fake versions of the harp, and yeah. I mean, there is no harp. If, harp. if there was a harp there, it's gone now. I mean, I'm gonna find the harp. He kind of like smiles and he likes, okay, all right, yeah, sure. Hey, you've pulling my leg. Why are you so interested? Well, you you know, I just love music and I've, I've always felt connected to Vivian, like almost as if, I don't know. I just, I, I feel, I feel like, Vivian is the best god, you know, and I I feel like if I if I find the harp and I get to play it, then I'll be the best bard ever, in like the whole history of ever. Oh, so it's like a power thing. You want to you want to find the harp to become the best musician ever? Yeah, I guess. Uh, but I could teach other people about how to be the best musician ever too. I just I think that music has been garbage. Whole, just dog water garbage the last couple of centuries and I'm just trying to, you know unite people through music 
he starts kind of leaning on his leg. He's, he's sitting on the table with his feet on the chair. And he's kind of, he starts playing with his earring a little bit. And he goes, have you thought about, about my music as well? Our music. Are no. We dog well, to you? you're not very popular. And that's because your music is good. Ah, that was the weirdest backhanded compliment I've ever had. And he downs another shot. <laughs> he goes, just People like don't I like real you. art. People don't like real art nowadays. And are you still practicing music then? Oh yeah, I've been doing it. Um, my my members, my action, my team members might actually be a little tired of it. Oh really? Then, what do you play? Yeah, again? it's been so long. I'm sorry. I, I, I play uh, the flute. I play um, I play the lyre. Um, I also can, I, you know, I can pretty much try out any instrument. Uh, I think the only one I'm I'm not good at doing is uh, the drums. I'm horribly um, bad at per percussion. I see. Oh, well, uh, same here. I, I don't really get the whole beat thing. It's it's uh, hard for me to wrap my mind around. Um, but if you'd like, um, and he kind of un unlocks his guitar case and pulls out this like nice wooden acoustic guitar. He's like, would you try? Like, would you like to try it out? Let's see how much money you can make. Miss, uh, I know everything, and I'm going to be the best musician ever. He kind of hands you the guitar. All right. In fact, I'm going to write a song about it right now. He, uh, he kind of gives a big grin and he, he nudges Terry, too. He's like, wake up, Terry, too. Wake up. She's just going to play some music. And he kind of like ruffles awake. Eyes kind of blink okay. a little bit. I'm going to make an epic ballad about a girl on a quest for a harp that's going to make her the best musician in the history of ever. And it's going to be super cool and moving and inspiring and exciting. Like Jack Black type performance. Oh, okay. All right. So like kind of like an improv, like uh, yeah. pick of destiny type shit. Yeah. Like the, this is the greatest song in the world. No, no. This is just a tribute. <laughs> Hell yeah. All right. Um, so give me a second here and give me a second. Let me look and see. I think your godly ability lets you kind of do some cool stuff here. Have you looked at that yet? Uh, I think it, I think it, uh, can cause chaos, though. Let's see, Blessing It can, like, cause, like, a chaotic action to happen, is what the, it, there's, like, a downfall to it. It's not, like, I can just do it without any consequences. Yeah, so, once per day when you're playing music or reading a poem, uh, you may choose to have your godly abilities flow through you and leak out into your song or poem. This causes two effects. You automatically, automatically succeed on any performance, persuasion, or charm effect that you're attempting with this song or poem. Uh, but then you must roll a d100 and the dm aka me will give you a random effect that happens because of the leaking of your powers uh, some are very positive some are negative and some are totally neutral okay oh man i'm scared like see i don't i don't know if i want to use it because i like didn't i didn't tell them that i was a demigod like i'm just pretending like i just want the harp mm -hmm. yeah um, um... If, if it means anything to you it's not something that people would automatically see unless it was like an, a magical effect that like uh was was very obvious um but you know it's it's one of those things that may or may not um reveal it, you can it affect anything or does it only affect me it could affect anything in the Fuck. general vicinity oh this is so hard i think i'm just gonna do a regular performance okay. because just roll I'm... your performance check yeah oh yeah nice, <laughs> nice. All right, so with, uh, and I will say, um, just so you know, for when you do use, if you ever use the Blessing of Vivian ability, that gives you a 20 on the check. So um, okay. this is actually, you, you actually did better than um, what the Blessing would give you. So Not a natural 20, no. it just gives you a dirty 20. Um, so uh, with that, you play the song the the bar the bards like looking at you they, their eyes get real big terry too starts kind of swaying back and forth uh and starts humming a tune as you're uh playing giving you a little bit of backup uh crocus and fergus you uh start jamming in a way that you haven't before with uh shisa you know she plays the flute and the lyre which are two very different instruments than this guitar she is strumming the fuck out of this thing and almost everybody in the bar stops to um, to watch and, and admire and listen to the song. And as they're listening to the lyrics and kind of getting into it, um, even the barmaid, the goblin barmaid, gets up on the bar and she starts uh, swinging her glasses around. And uh, as you finish the last strum of the song and the whole uh, bar continues to 
um, like starts riling back up their voices. You start hearing cheers and hoots and hollers and people are throwing things at you. Um, Shisa, uh, you end up getting 112 gold pieces worth of uh, money from your performance. Um, there are two rings that you see. Uh, one of them looks like a wedding ring and you hear from the back of the room, Marry me, please! Um, and... Uh, what is your passive perception? It'll be in the bottom left of your character sheet in its own little box. Uh, like right it above your language. 12. 12. All right. All right. Uh, you don't notice anything in particular. Uh, out of the ordinary, just uh, a lot of people... I mean, the only thing that's out of the ordinary is you've never had an ovation like this before, a standing ovation of people being so happy to uh, to see you. So you get one gold ring that's worth a, a single gold piece, um, and then you also... Uh, see a diamond ring that uh, could be worth quite a bit. Yo, Jay, thank you for the raid of 103. Yo, welcome. Thank you so much for the raid. Hi, everybody from Jay's stream. Hi, hi, hi. Welcome to Dungeons and Dragons. Huge shout out to Jay. Welcome, raiders. Hi, I hope you uh, enjoyed the music on Jay's stream or whatever you guys were doing. Final Fantasy, is that what it was? Yeah, Final Fantasy 14. You nerd. <laughs> Thanks for being here. You know, uh, Jay played a bard on one of my campaigns called Declan. Um, he's an incredible um, musician. He's done all kinds of work with uh, all kinds of content creators and um, just a, a, a lot of love. Thank you so much for the uh, the raid, Jay. Go yell at Comcast. Yeah, fuck Comcast. Don't say I don't. I mean, I, I didn't say that. You know, you didn't say that. I said that is what I'm trying to say. You know, Jay, Comcast <laughs> is amazing, right? You love Comcast because they're going to fix it for you. I'm saying fuck Comcast. Uh, for you. All right. Uh, big love. Thanks so much for, for being here, man. Um, <laughs> all right. So, uh, back to, uh, Shisa, you just finished your performance. It was a huge success. Everyone goes back to their, uh, their conversations and, uh, the great success. Back. Great success. Yes. Uh, and as you hand the guitar back to Terry, he, uh, kind of has this dumbfounded look like that was amazing. Well, I have improved since you last saw me. Yeah, no shit. And he kind of puts the guitar into the case and locks it back up. And he says, well, whatever it is that you want from Vivian, I mean, how could she ignore you? You're fucking amazing. That's what I'm saying. I'm confident. I just don't know where the hell that harp is. Yeah, I can't I mean, find it. They had all kinds of different stories of where it could have gone, you know? Who knows? Um, one of the most outlandish ones I heard was that giants took it. Can you believe that? <laughs> joke <laughs> oh my god giant um why don't you think giants could have taken it uh, when when have you ever seen a giant come and and take anything the giants stay in their own little you know little places the villages the, the cities in the sky or whatever I mean, why would they why would they come down here for a little harp who even knows if the harp even existed? You know what I heard? I heard it was a landslide that killed the uh, the people in the temple and uh, destroyed it. So that's what I heard. Bullocks. I don't believe it. Oh. You really believe it's giants? Well, it's the only story there is. I mean... Besides the stupid landslide. I heard some other ones. Like, I heard there was a, a famous thief who came into the temple and planted uh, explosives around the edges of the temple, stole the harp and exploded the temple and everyone that was inside, women, children, priests. Mm -hmm. That was one of the things that uh, the tour guides were saying. I don't believe that one either. Well, there was another one. There was a giant worm that came through and came through and <laughs> destroyed the entire temple and actually ate the harp and it's inside the worm's stomach and it's somewhere out there in the desert. The Alaskan bullworm? Yes, that's exactly what they called it, except for it wasn't Alaskan, it was a Kloxen bullworm. <laughs> oh no. Yeah, I don't believe that one either. What, why not? It's just as it's just as feasible as giants. <laughs> well, think maybe for a second, what if the giants believe in Vivian? He kinda raises an eyebrow. 
I mean, maybe they're a bit old-fashioned, aren't they? Hmm. Well, either way, I wouldn't want to find out, you know. I'm not trying to get my bones ground to dust and turned into bread and all that. The, uh, well, the Kenku kind of turns to him and goes, That's racist! And he kind of, like, raises an eyebrow and he goes, No, it's, um, a story. It's a children's story. And the, the, the raven kind of raises an eyebrow and he goes, No. That's racist! He says it again and the guy, Can you stop, please? <laughs> and he, like, pushes him. Oh my god. <laughs> Fuck him up, Terry Two. Fuck him up. <laughs> Have you ever seen a giant, Terry Two? And Terry Two kind of uh, tilts his head and he goes, "No." And he says, "That's what I thought." Have you ever I seen got... a giant, Shisa? No. That's what I thought. Who knows if they even exist? I've never seen any proof. Well, maybe I should just go up there and check for myself, huh? Maybe you should. You know, it seems that that's the direction you're heading. And uh, no matter what happens, um, it seems like you're going places, whatever, wherever it is. Uh, and you seem happy. Thanks. No cavern shall be left unplunged as long as I am alive. He kind of uh, nods his head and he goes, that's quite the motto. Uh, I think I'm just going to keep playing music and doing my thing. I, I'm not really much of a cavern plunderer. I said plunged instead of plundered, and I just realized it. Uh, it's just the same thing, plunge, plunder. I do both at the toilet, and he kind of raises an eyebrow. He goes, that was a bad joke. Man, that was bad. Okay, well, yeah, you can, you know, you can join us anytime if you'd like, if you're interested in any fun... Fun adventures. I just warn you, you might die. He he laughs audibly. <laughs> oh, join you. Join you for what? Well, I mean, if you ever like want to like search some cool caves or for jewelry or I don't know. If... It's not that I wouldn't. It's not that I wouldn't want to, but I don't see how I would be of any use to you. No, me, maybe Terry too. He's uh, pretty strong and uh, Terry, too, kind of goes like this and flexes. See, it's not about you being useful to me. It's about me being useful to you. What, what is it that, that you could do for me other than, you know, provide me laughter and, and companionship? Keep you alive? Keep me alive? Why would I need to be <laughs> yes. kept alive? What have you Just faced you that's so dangerous? Have you faced the Eclexon oh. Bullworm? Wow, yeah. it seems like you really genuinely believe that. If you haven't experienced it yourself, it doesn't exist out there, huh? Yeah, he kind of smiles and he goes, Okay, I get your points. I get it. Listen, you all seem like, you know, the adventuring type. And I'm more of the uh, in the tavern, sleep with as many people as possible kind of thing. It's not really out there and adventuring and getting my hands and shit dirty. I get my hands dirty in one way and that's it. Okay, well, if you want to trade one risky behavior for another, just let me know. <laughs> it's not risky, okay? I'm good at telling who's, you know, clean and who's not. Oh, I'm okay. sure. He kinda, I'm sure. He kind of bashfully, like, smiles and looks away. He goes, eh, okay, I'm not always <laughs> looking that hard, okay? It's in the moment, you just kind of feel it. Uh, and Terry, too, just kind of shakes his head like he's like, man, this this guy. Uh, and <laughs> Terry, Terry, too, kind of uh, leans forward to you, Shisa. And he goes, I would follow you anywhere. <laughs> Says it in kind of like a knight's voice. Thank you so much. Oh, Terry too, I mean. <laughs> yeah. I... You know, Kenku can't smile, but uh, you get a, a turn of the corner of the lips that kind of turns up as he, <laughs> as he say that. Okay, um, I think I'm just gonna, like, pat him on the head. <laughs> he, uh, he kind of, like, ruffles his feathers. His feathers kind of rise up a little bit on the back of his neck as you do that, and he... <laughs> and, uh... <laughs> as, as you do that, Terry, uh... He's kind of nodding. He's, he's like, listening to the, the random music in the bar from, like, random people playing their instruments and just kind of, like, swaying back and forth. It seems like his alcohol's kind of hitting him, and, um... He, uh, he says, So... When are you leaving? Are you leaving uh, tomorrow? Are you spending the night? Or, um... Well, 
I think these two will need a little bit of rest, but um, yeah, we'll probably leave once we once we wake up. Well, uh, that is uh, that sounds wonderful. Uh, Terry too kind of uh, un un does his man bun up at the top and uh, takes the takes the band and puts it around his arm as his hair kind of falls down. This um, shaggy kind of sandy brown hair uh, swipes across his shoulders and uh, kind of falls down in front of his face and he wipes it uh, over his ear. Uh, his earring kind of gets caught in the hair a little bit and he gets it out of the, gets it out and uh, leans over to his right to uh, a gentleman who's it's kind of a tall slender lizard folk uh, and uh, Terry kind of taps him on the shoulder and uh, it seems like it's almost like you know when drunk people kind of forget what they're doing like he forgot he's having a conversation with you because he leans over to the lizard folk and he's like so um, are you uh you single for the night, and the the lizard folk. He he kind of like raises his eyebrow. His little tongue kind of shoots out a little bit. His his green scales um, kind of shimmer in the in the tavern light. And uh, he he leans down and whispers something into Terry's ear. And Terry gets a big grin on his face. And uh, the lizard folk walks away uh, to the stairway and up to the stairs. And uh, Terry kind of comes back to you and he goes, "I'm sorry, where were we?" <clears throat> um. I I don't know. I just uh, we're we're just gonna hang out for the night, and then we're gonna head out tomorrow. And yeah, I. Right. Well, um, we may or may not be here when you come back. It depends on um, all kinds of things, uh, the money and um, you know the people. And... Okay. Well, I know you guys will be fine. You always you always find a way, just like I do. Yes, and you, of course. I mean. Look at you. You and your group, you're going to have each other's backs 100%. And whatever it is you're trying to do with Vivian, you know, it's going to work out. And uh, here, 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 here. Um, he uh, digs in his bag a little bit, and he um, takes out this guitar pick and gives it to you. It's uh, kind of like a marbly white color with black spots. And uh, it says Terry on one side and Terry two on the other. And uh, he says... These, uh, what we've been giving out is business cards, and if you're interested, I can help you, uh, make some if you, if you're looking to actually get out there and, and, and get big as a musician. Um, these, these are kind of special. Um, if you hold it and think of us and speak into the, uh, the guitar pick, it will actually call to us and, uh, tell us where we're at. So, if you, uh, if you ever need us or want to, uh, catch back up, we can, uh, communicate through this, uh, but only to us. It, it only goes to, uh, me and Terry, too. Oh, that's crazy. This is like some crazy little future thing. Thanks. He kind of smiled. It's magically enchanted, and it doesn't work oh. forever. It does not work forever. It only look, works for a few messages back and forth, but uh, the next time I see you, I can give you more. Um, we uh, we have a, a special uh, magical friend who makes them for us. Hey, that's awesome. Uh, thank you. And it's really nice to know that I can I can contact you. He, uh, he smiles a bit drunkenly and kind of um, nods back and forth. And he shakes his head like he's about to fall asleep. And he nudges Terry, too. And he goes, Terry, I'm going upstairs. Um, you have fun. Uh, don't get too uh, fucked up. And, um, you know, be safe. And he's saying that as he's getting off the table and uh, scooching his chair in. And uh, he says, Shisa, it's a pleasure. And he uh, kind of puts his hand out for your hand. Uh, I'll see you next time. As, do you put your hand in his hand? Yeah. He kisses the top of it, just like in a gentlemanly way. And uh, he says, Fergus, it was wonderful to meet you. Puts his hand out. Lovely to meet you too. I shake his hand back. And Crocus, he gives you a pat on the back and he says, don't get too drunk, Crocus. You okay? <laughs> I'm not doing that one again. That's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. You get used to it. You get used to it, love. <laughs> Thanks, It was nice Gary. to meet you. Nice to meet you as well. He stumbles his way through the crowd and up the steps. Terry, too, lays back on the table and uh, continues to snooze. And it's just the three of you. Uh, if you would like to talk with each other, or you can talk with Terry, too, or you can move around the bar and try and find someone else. Fergus, you also had a um, a person that you saw. A uh, almost regal-looking uh, lizard folk lady who is sitting at the bar 
kind of look like a lizard folk queen you can go talk to if you'd like. Yeah, I'll approach her and uh, I'll approach her and have a chat with her. Uh, as you approach the uh, the lizard folk lady, so she's got this kind of like onyx black colored skin and scales. Um, her chest and like the front side of her neck and um, you know that kind of area of her body is uh, exposed um, and it has kind of a yellowy goldish tint to it so uh, the front side kind of front of her neck and underside of her jaw and down to where her breasts are is all kind of gold and then all the rest of her is this like black shiny onyx scales um, Her she's wearing this beautiful red dress with these uh, bone tooth necklaces and earrings and um, she even has this kind of wrap on her head that kind of comes down and over the side of her shoulder. And she's drinking at the bar. And as you walk up, she seemed like she was alone, but as you walk up, these two lizard folk in, in large armor kind of come out of the crowd and step in front of you uh, and kind of block your path. And uh, one of them says, Hey, don't get too close, little man. I was just trying to say hello, mate. We'll say hello from here. Your Majesty, you have an admirer. She kind of like looks back. Um, as she does, you see now the front side of her face is, uh, it's it's kind of long and slender, comes down in this alligator-like um, snout, uh, and uh, the, the teeth are large and sharp. Uh, her eyes are this kind of piercing, uh, almost white, like gray-white color. Um, and as she's, she looks at you, she does have this kind of um, attractive, slender face, that comes down to that point, and um, as she looks at you, she says, he looks harmless. You can let him through. And uh, as she says that, the guards step aside, Fergus, for you to walk up. She says, what is it? She looks kind of depressed. Um, I don't believe we met, but you look familiar. Um, my name's Fergus, son of uh, Lytropius. She puts her hand out. I shake her hand, or I, yeah. What do you do? Um, mm, I guess I'll like kiss the back of her hand and be like, "Lovely to meet you." Okay. She kind of nods her head and takes her hand back, and uh, as she does, she nudges another lizard folk who's sitting next to her, and he gets off of his stool and uh, kind of wavers to it for you to sit on. Yeah, I sit down on the chair. She uh, slides you over. Uh, what looks like a full drink that she was about to drink, but uh, she slides it over to you, and she says, uh, I look familiar, do I? Uh, what is it that makes me look familiar? Um, I don't know. I can't place it. There's not many reptilian folk out here, and uh, <laughs> I guess we're similar looking enough that I thought I'd come say hi. Hmm. <laughs> She kind of laughs. Well, that was an interesting conversation. And she kind of looks away. She seems a bit standoffish. A bit depressed. She's be like, are you alright, mate? You're in a pub and you seem a bit... Or sorry, you're in a tavern and you seem a wee bit... Skew whiff. What's going on? She, she gives like a big sigh, like... <sighs> It's just been a long week, you know what I mean? I mean, it depends what you define as a long week, but I definitely know what you mean, yeah. Me and my uh, me and my fellow adventurers have uh, definitely had a long week. What about, what, what's been up with yours? She uh, kind of looks back into the sea of people, uh, and, and then to you, and she makes eye contact with you for the first time. Um, her kind of piercing gray and white eyes are, are almost give you a chill as you look at them. And she goes, I had to murder my husband yesterday. So that sucks. And she looks away. Why did you have to do that? It doesn't sound like you did it in uh, warm blood. It sounds like... Uh... <laughs> yeah. Why did you do that? She, uh, she kind of smiles uh, and she says, I haven't told anybody that. It was the first time I've said it out loud. That's mm, that's sad. I should say that. Why more. did you smile? She uh, she kind of she's smirking as she's looking at you, and she goes, "Do I scare you?" 
No, I'm just curious. It's not a normal reaction for you to smile, uh, for someone to smile after they said they've murdered someone. Well, what if I told you he was a piece of shit who was trying to take my throne from me? With that attitude, I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah, he tried to poison my food. And what's the motive behind that? To, just to take your throne, or...? Indeed. You know... Oh, that's what you get for uh, marrying out of your class. She smiles, and she goes, I'm not sure why men are so scared of a matriarchy. You know what I mean? Uh... Because men like to think they have power, and when you take that power away from them, uh, they don't know what to do. She she laughs and she says, "Yeah, you're right. Yeah, you're right. That's exactly right." Well, I uh, I took a knife and I rammed it into his trachea, so uh, that won't be a problem anymore. Uh, yeah, she takes a big swig of her drink. <laughs> um. <laughs> Um. <laughs> nice. <laughs> um. Well, uh, listen. I, I I don't know how much help I can be to you here, but uh, you might be a, a bit of help to to me. I um. Might have made a promise to somebody that I don't think I can cannot keep, and I and I uh, might need to dispose of them soon enough. So uh, maybe you could give me some advice. She uh, she kind of smiles again, and she goes, Oh, now I'm an assassin. Oh, did you hear that? I'm an assassin now. He thinks I can help him dispose of someone. The, the two guards kind of start laughing. <laughs> she, she says, Well, tell me about it. I told you all about me. Well, you kept it fairly vague, so I'll do the same. But uh, long story short is uh, I... Uh, promised someone very powerful that I would uh, come back for their hand in marriage and uh, in the hopes that they would die in a in a valiant battle that we fought but uh, un fortunately unfortunately whichever way you look at it they, they, they didn't die in the battle and uh, I'm gonna have to complete this promise and then I kind of like shore the ring um, and like pr show that it like can't be taken off or whatever she, uh, she gently kind of wraps her hand around your hand and puts her fingers on the ring and kind of tugs on it a little bit. She goes, oh, that is bad. <laughs> I've seen that kind of thing before. Yes, um, that is a hex. Uh, you have been hexed, my friend. Um, she, uh, she kind of smiles as her, her big teeth kind of show. And, uh, she says, well, just so you know, d before you try it, cutting your finger off isn't going to work. <laughs> She takes another swig of a drink. That's reassuring. Um, it definitely was one of my options, because I don't really need my fingers too much. Um, or at least one, you know. Being a finger down isn't the end of the world. So, as far as I know, the only way of breaking a hex like this is either one, dying. If you die, then it's over. Two, uh, you could find someone else to fall in love with, and then that person and the person you've been hexed to must battle it out to the death. Sorry. Carry on. Continue. The third way is to kill the person who hexed you. Well, thankfully I'm sat beside a, a master of, uh, of, of killing, so uh, how do you suggest I uh, kill a member of uh, royalty? She kind of smiles and she goes, Damn, I should have hired you then and have a less, less on my conscience. <laughs> I mean, if you pay <laughs> if you pay well, um, I'm always uh, open to proposals. Is that so? Yes. Um, what if I gave you a platinum tooth necklace worth about 600 gold pieces? Um... To kill that guy over there, and she kind of points to a guy over across the bar. He touched my ass earlier without my consent. <laughs> Fucking hell. <laughs> now, to be fair, I'm not sure if he did it on purpose. He may have just been walking by, but I'm in a bad mood. <laughs> if 
if you'd um, like, you can roll an insight check to see if she's lying or... Yeah, 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 yeah. That's exactly what I was going to say. Uh... Uh, with a 14, um, let me roll for her real quick. Um, she, uh, she seems to be kind of teasing you. She sounded serious, but I, you don't think that she is actually asking that of you. Okay. Um, interesting proposal, but, um, I don't deal with low level work such as bar disputes. Um, I was talking more of the real deal. Yeah, uh, uh, so she kind of smiles and she goes, yeah, I was just kidding anyway. He was just very loud and boisterous and annoying. Anyway, mm, I don't have anything, uh, any work for you. I'm sorry, uh, Mr. Assassin. <laughs> but, um, you know, your hex seems uh, quite serious, so um, you get, better get back to the love of your life. You know? But I'm you're sure sat right in front of me. Hmm? But you're sat right in front of me. <laughs> uh, are you actually flirting with her? Yeah, or, why not? Are you fake flirting with her? No, 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 why not? Yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll flirt with her. <laughs> she, uh, she kind of gives a, a, a slight smile that kind of turns into a bigger one as she looks away. Uh, if a lizard folk could blush, she would. And uh, <laughs> she says, That was good. I like that. That made me, that made me feel something. Mm. Yeah. She uh, kind of looks looks over at you. Um, her her gray white eyes are um, kind of like staring into your soul at the moment, um, and then they they kind of turn gentle. Her eyes kind of turn gentle for a moment, and uh, she says, "I haven't genuinely smiled like that in a long time." <laughs> um, what was your name again? I'm Fergus. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, Fergus. And you're a kobold. I'm not just a kobold. She, uh, she, she's like waiting in anticipation. Um, does she have any of her drink left? Yeah. Um, I, the what, the same way I, the same way I can waterbend. Could I just like levitate the liquid out of her drink? Sure. Yeah. Um, you're yeah. able to. To kind of wave your fingers, and as you do the, what do you make? What do you do? You just want to levitate. Um, it? I'll just make. Uh, I'll ask her, what's your favorite animal? Uh, she, uh, she kind of smiles and she goes, kobold. <laughs> Smart. That was good. I like that. You're, you're, uh, you're quite sleek yourself. And then I kind of. Um, as best as I can, water bend the half pint of beer into a, a downscaled model of me, I suppose. All right, roll me a nature check with advantage. Let's roll twice to kill. Remember. Yeah, yeah. Nice, eighteen. You uh, make a uh, beautiful kobold with the uh, the rest of her drink that's in her cup. You kind of float it out of the cup into the air. It kind of wiggles and wargles in the air and turns into the shape of you and uh you even get it to like move a little bit and uh then fall back into the glass only a little bit of it kind of splashes onto the bar and her eyes are are kind of real big and she says well you're very talented i see um wow that's impressive um where did you learn that are you are you a magical kobold then is that what you're trying to say uh no i'm um... Uh, a demigod. She, uh, stops for a second, and she kind of, like, squints her eyes at you, like, in suspicion, because you've been kind of joking around, and she goes, you're not joking, are you? Could any standard kobold waterbend like that? I don't know. Much less when they have, when, much less once they've had six pints of beer. Well, I haven't met many, and I have never met a blue one like you. Hmm. This is, uh, Peculiar. Demigod of what? The sea. I see. Oh, that was not... I did not mean to say a pun there, but yes, I do see. I see. She kind of, like, <laughs> smiles a little bit. Um, she says, Well, I'm kind of a demigod myself. And how's that? 
she uh, she kind of stamps her. Um, she, she kind of picks up this staff that she's got and she slams it on the ground once. It's kind of to her left, just been leaning on the bar. She slams it on the ground once. And uh, as she does, the, uh, the guards slam theirs on the ground in kind of a loud noise. And then everybody in the bar just like stops. And then she slams her, her thing down again and the guards slam theirs down again and everything picks back up. All the people See? looked at her. They didn't like, like time didn't stop. All the people just stopped and looked at her like awaiting her to say something. And then she went back to, and they all went back to what they were doing. So you're a... Hmm. I don't understand. You're a god of people? She uh, she says, you could say that. I'm more like, I just have a lot of influence around here. I see. So you're an influencer. Yes. Okay. The, um, uh, I'm not actually a demigod, per se. Just uh, someone with a lot of reach. And, um... Not really so you might have a lot I'm of, kind of... I'm kind of done with it. It's kind of really annoying. <laughs> I just didn't want to give it to that asshole, you know what I mean? Yeah, for sure. Um, well, hey, you know, you showed me a cool trick. Uh, let me show you something. And I kind of put my hand out to hers and I say, like, look, we need to go outside for this. And we kind of like, I kind of like lead her out. Well, assuming she joins me, I, I like motion to lead her outside. She uh, stands up, as she does. She's about like probably 5'11", close to six foot uh, as she stands and her tail kind of um, droops behind her in a way where it kind of, it almost trails behind her like a wedding gown almost. Um, it's, mm -hmm. it's very gently kind of like slithering behind her as she walks. She grabs her staff. Um, the guards kind of walk alongside. Um, one guard in front pushes the crowd out of the way for you to walk through. Um, and uh, you actually hear one of the guards kind of whisper to her and say, are you sure about this? He's, uh, he doesn't look trustworthy to me. And she says, oh, just hush. I can handle myself. And she we'll be back in two minutes anyway, guards. Don't you worry. The guard kind of stops and uh, just makes sure the crowd doesn't collapse on you. And um, you guys walk out the, uh, the front doors. Uh, we walk about five meters at the front door. And I, I, I just point to a tree, like kind of just outside... I'm sort of imagining we're at like the edge of the village yeah. and I point to like a tree that's maybe like 30, 40 meters away and I'm like, you see that tree? She nods her head. Mm -hmm. I pull the trident out and I just like double tap the floor and, and a massive lightning bolt just strikes the tree. All right. As the, uh, as the lightning bolt kind of comes down and, and strikes the tree, uh, lighting it on fire, she, she smiles and go, she goes, oh, okay, fireworks. Wow, that's impressive. That's very impressive. You really are uh, associated with Lytropius. That's incredible. I don't know much about all of that, but it is fascinating. I've... I always thought the gods were locked away in... She kind of looks down at the trident. Oh, that's... She kind of points to it in kind of a, a wiggly waggly finger kind of way. She goes, oh, yeah, this, uh, that's, um, that's one of those artifacts, isn't it? Mm. Indeed, she, it she is. Looks disinterested. Um, like she doesn't look interested in the artifacts. Is what I'm trying to say, like she doesn't, she doesn't look like she's at all that impressed of the artifacts. She's more, she's more impressed with you. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, listen, it's not to worry that you haven't uh, heard much about Lytropius because um, you know the night is young, and I've got uh, the suite over at the tavern, so you know. I'm uh, more than welcome to tell you everything and anything you want to know about him. She uh, she smiles gently, and then her smile kind of fades, and she looks at you in kind of a serious way. And uh, she kneels down in not at all a patronizing way. Yeah. She, she kneels down in front of you so that she can kind of really make eye contact with you. And she says, mm, Fergus, you don't even know my name. Um, that might be the case but it's hard to ignore true beauty when you see it 
Uh, sorry. Is Fergus being serious? Yeah, yeah, I'm being okay. serious. I just right. laughing yeah, at me yeah. saying it. Um. So, uh, as she says that, she says, "My name is Tara." Well, Tara, it's lovely to meet you. And you as well. Now, I'm going to need you to be honest with me. She points to the finger on your ring, or the, the ringer, ringer on your finger, <laughs> the ringer on your finger. Yeah. Uh, uh, anyway, she points to that, and she says, Are you just trying to use me to battle your hex love? You just want me to battle her and kill her? No. I see... something about you. I feel like you're trapped in a cage or you're like a canary who hasn't found its voice and uh, I can see that there's something inside of you that's yearning to get out. Uh, I don't quite know what that is, but uh, you kind of remind me of me and my brother before we discovered who we really were, so I uh, I don't know. I feel some kind of way. She gently smiles and uh, looks down at the ground, and if a, if a, a beautiful, powerful lizard folk queen could look bashful for a moment, she does. Uh, and she stands up and looks away from you, and she says, kind of facing the sunset, um, you, you can both kind of look out at the, the ocean and the sunset. She, she looks away from you and out at the sunset, and she says, So you have all night. You know, I might need an hour or two sleep, but for the most part, yeah. She says, well, I wasn't planning on returning for at least a couple days, so I think I can spend a night with a handsome gentleman. Give it a shot. Perfect. Should we go back to the bar then? Sure. She, uh, kind of starts walking towards the door and uh, as she does the guards already open it up like they're like they've been watching through the door kind of thing <laughs> they uh they open up the door before she even gets to it and she kind of like tilts her head in like an like an almost embarrassed kind of way she uh she smiles and she goes sorry about them no need to apologize you're a woman of influence you need be you need to be looked after yes well i would like for that to change soon <laughs> Let's see what we can do about that, shall we? She uh, she kind of smiles. Um, as you head back to the bar, she says, "Are you thinking of sneaking away?" Because I could be yeah, done let's, for that. Yeah, let, let's maybe have one or two more and uh, scoot our way out of here, shall we? She uh, she smiles and um, taps the bar just with her index finger. It's barely loud enough to be heard over the crowd, but. Um, you see the bartender, who's this kind of this big husky half orc guy, um, just kind of glance over her in direction, in her direction, nod. Um, he hollers at you, Fergus, and he says, "What are you having?" Uh, the same as her, and I kind of tap uh, Tara on the shoulder. She uh, she smiles and nods at the bartender, who also uh, nods back, and then he comes back with. Uh, the same drink she had before, which is kind of like a, a mix between a, an ale and, a, or sorry, a mead. It's like a mix between a mead, with like, so like a fruity kind of beer and uh, a wine that she's been mm -hmm. drinking and uh, slides them to you. And she says, so who are your um, friends then? I, I can't really tell with all these people around. Um, I point over to Shisa. Um, I'm like, that's uh, my good friend Shisa, she's uh, currently reconnecting with some old friends, and uh, over there, the very drunk uh, pink person that is uh, my friend Crocus uh, and uh, I believe they're catching up with old friends that they haven't seen in uh, many moons She nods her head and she says they look nice Yes, I am very blessed to know them, we've been through a lot together she uh, smiles and uh, again kind of looks away and says to herself, um, 
you're not sure if she wanted you to hear it or not. You're not even sure if she meant to say it out loud. But she kind of says, under her breath, as she's looking away, I wish I had friends like that. <laughs> um... And then she, because I'm not sure if she meant to say it out loud, I'm, I'm not going to acknowledge it. Okay. And then she uh, she kind of turns back, and as the drinks come, she says, This is one of my favorites. They call it a sunset around here. Well, it's a pleasure. And then I, like, kind of hold my glass up to cheers her. She uh, she cheers is with you. Um, Crocus and Shisa, anything that you guys want to be doing during this conversation, which lasts... I mean, so far it's been about uh, probably 30 or so minutes of Fergus um, being with uh, the queen there. I think I'm going to be uh, sitting with Terry, too, just, like, trying to teach Terry, too, how to play some instruments or just, like, you know, chilling with him. Okay. And you can also teach Terry to any phrases that you want. So if you have a phrase you <laughs> yeah. want to teach Terry yeah. to. Yeah. <laughs> I'm telling him, to, I'm teaching him how to say, I had I had sex with your mom. <laughs> you say that and he says, I had sex with your mom. He says it like <laughs> in the same way that you said it. And, uh, Perfect. <laughs> Uh, some guy, uh, after maybe 20 minutes after you teach, uh, Terry to that, some guy's kind of walking by your area and he bump, like shoulder checks you. She says he's walking by and Terry to immediately just out of the spur out of his mouth. He goes, I had sex with your mom. And the guy turns <laughs> and looks at Terry too. And he goes, what the fuck did you just say to me? And, uh, I'm Terry gonna turn, wait, I, I think I'm going to interrupt and I'm going to say, I'm, I'm going to use, uh, can I use persuasion to be like, he doesn't mean it. <laughs> sure. Roll a persuasion check. 19. The the guy kind of fuming is is red kind of cheeks. Uh, he's obviously drunk and also probably a little embarrassed from he like hearing Terry 2 say that to him. Uh, he's, he looks at you and uh, kind of just nods and he goes, Yeah, we'll make sure he doesn't say shit like that to people again. Yeah, he just, uh, he doesn't understand English. I'm sorry. Mm. I kind of hear this commotion across the bar and I, I, uh, I mistake it, and I think that the guy is uh, being cheeky to Shisa, so I, I kind of say to Taro that I'll be back in two seconds, and I, I walk over and I tell him to watch his fucking mouth. Okay, so as you come up, and Shisa, you had just calmed this guy down, and Fergus comes no. over <laughs> and says to watch his fucking mouth, and the guy looks down at you, Fergus, and uh, he goes, What'd you say to me, you little shit? Okay. I'm going to say, I'm I'm going to step in again, and I'm going to use deception, and I'm going to say, he said, he said, he said, yeah, keep it cool, man. Or, no, I'm just going to say, he didn't say anything, actually. I'm going to say, he didn't say anything. Okay. So you kind of step in front and say, uh, he didn't say anything, roll me a deception, 19 again. <laughs> okay. Fergus, are you doing anything, or are you keeping your mouth shut? Up to you. I kind of clock on to what she's just doing, so I just, I bite my tongue. Okay. He, uh, he looks at you this time. He's, he's got like bloodshot eyes. He's looking kind of angry. Um, but he just goes like, <clears throat> and turns his back on you in an angry way and pushes his way through the crowd. A few people are like, Hey, watch it asshole. As he starts pushing through the crowd, his way out of the bar. And, uh, you've, you've avoided that situation. Thank God I'm a girl boss. Terry, she's <laughs> like, I'm sorry. Says it like, says it like a kid. I'm sorry. I'm just gonna say. I'm just gonna say, Terry. You got to be careful who you say it to. Okay, you can only say it to friends. He nods his head and immediately turns to Fergus. I had sex with your mom. Yeah. <laughs> I just <laughs> like. I, yeah, I just like laugh. But yeah. Uh, Terry kind of uh, nods his head and he goes, "Oh, I got it this time." <laughs> Oh my god. And then we all kind of laugh and I, I go back and and sit uh with Tara. Okay. So, um with that situation, Crocus, is there anything else you wanted to do? I think at this point Crocus is just drunkenly dancing. <laughs> <laughs> they are out dancing. Maybe they're mingling a little bit. I think they would mingle a little bit. <laughs> okay. Uh Crocus, as you're kind of out dancing and mingling uh, this, um, really kind of, um, burly looking, uh, 
half-orc woman. She kind of uh, comes up and starts uh, swaying with you, and she she's got this kind of large underbite. Um, she's she's got these beautiful long eyelashes. Her ear kind of his, her left ear is you know it's it's kind of that half half orc kind of pointy uh, orc ear, but it's got a big chunk out of the bottom of it, um, and it looks like it looks like it's scarred as well uh, on her left ear. Her right ear has this beautiful purple earring kind of dangling down, uh, purple bulb earring. Um, she's got glasses that kind of come down to the tip of her nose, and uh, she. She's kind of swaying back and forth. She's wearing just kind of like leather armor um, with this kind of flowy, uh, like light blue, um, almost almost see-through kind of silky uh, over garment over her leather armor. Uh, and she's uh, kind of swaying back and forth with you. And she goes, Hi, what's your name? <laughs> Crocus? <laughs> She gives a big grin, and you can see her her uh, kind of tusks peeking through from underneath. Um, and uh, she says, "Hi, Crocus. I'm." Uh... She puts her hand out for a, a handshake. She like stops and kind of bows a little bit and puts her hand out for a handshake. And uh, she says, "My name's Edge." Hi, Edge. <laughs> Crocus like shakes her hand very firmly. <laughs> Uh, she shakes your hand and she says, I'm the town librarian. She kind of smiles. Are you Ooh. new to town? Yeah, my friends and I are visiting. <laughs> she uh, she smiles and she as she's still holding your hand from the um, handshake, she then kind of lifts it up and twirls you to the music. Um, and uh, as she does, then she kind of like... Um, Pulls you a little closer, not super close, just uh, a little bit closer, uh, and kind of has one hand on your shoulder and one hand on your waist as you're kind of like swaying back and forth. And uh, she she says, uh, she seems a little drunk too. She seems a little uh, a little tipsy, uh, and she says, "So what brings you to the city?" She's kind of yelling over the crowd. Mm. Uh, I just think about that. Mm. Oh, you know, just stay in, stay in for a night or, or two. <laughs> she, uh, she smiles. Visiting. <laughs> she smiles and uh, kind of pushes her glasses up uh, to her eyes, and then they kind of slope down a little bit on her nose again, and she, uh, under her breath, just kind of curses, oh, these damn things, and she kind of pushes them back up. Um, it looks like the nose piece of it is a little busted, and uh, maybe she's not the most handsy person. Uh, or hand, handy, I should say, handy person. Um, and so, like, the nose piece is a little too big for her nose and it kind of keeps sliding down. Um, but uh, as you're swaying back and forth and uh, you say that, she says, Oh, stay in a couple nights, yeah? Well, um, you should swing by the library. Um, or, um, you know, you could come, I don't know, um, there's a really nice restaurant. You could come... Um, next to the library, and I could get food. I could show you around. I mean, I'd I'd love to see your library, like. <laughs> she kind of giggles. Um, she says very, um, very uh, uh, sincerely. She says very sincerely, um. What should I call you? What? She she um, kind of puts her hand on her chest. I go by she they. Oh. Mm. I go by she they as well, actually. She uh, kind of smiles and and uh, nods, and she she seems um, at home, and and she seems um, comforted by you um as sh as you continue to sway to the music oh. um and she says uh have you ever seen the sunset in this city cliffhaven is this no, your first I... first night here yeah here come upstairs come let me show you <laughs> okay <laughs> she pulls you through the crowd and up the steps and um you, you both climb up to the uh, the roof. There's 
Um, basically, the spiral staircase that just kind of goes up on the bar, and uh, or goes sorry goes up next to the bar, and then uh, goes up to the next level. It keeps going up to the roof, and there's this kind of uh, open door. It's already this trap door is already open. There's already people up here on the roof of the tavern, um, just kind of hanging out, drinking. There's tables up here and everything. Um, so the bar kind of goes like the main bar, the upper area, which is like the inn where you sleep, and then above that is another bar, like another. And a top level to the bar uh, where it's the roof. Um, there's some awnings and things, some some vines that kind of cover the awnings and things, and um, there's a little balcony for people to step out on, and there's already a couple who's kind of like just chilling on the balcony watching the sunset. Uh, as you walk over to it, it's a beautiful long horizon out, uh, kind of no blockage from any buildings. There's nothing blocking your view from the ocean. Um, as the sun is setting, it shines this beautiful kind of purple and orange uh, sheen off of the ocean. The clouds are kind of like rolling along over the top. The voices of the bar kind of fade into the background. Um, and uh, they kind of uh, fix their glasses again and they wipe the sweat from their uh, chin. And um, just kind of kind of the same way you would if you were just coming out of a club kind of thing. And um, they kind of look at you and then look over at the sunset expectantly waiting for you to say something in in a gent they're waiting gently for you to say something you're really really pretty sunset's really really pretty uh sunrise sunrise is really cool <laughs> uh she uh she gives this like huge bashful grin um if I didn't mention, her skin is kind of this seafoam green color, um, and uh, they kind of look at you and uh, back at the sunset, and uh, she says, "I could uh, sense something about you. Um, you seem, um, you seem kind." Crocus just hugs her. <laughs> <laughs> she hugs you back um, and oh. you both kind of share a moment in the warmth of the sunset um, as the sun goes down the uh, city itself behind you the of Cliffhaven is I mean it's more of a town the town itself behind you kind of lights up um, as the sun goes down and the darkness comes um, the couple who is standing up here with you on the balcony heads back down uh, and um she uh, she looks at you and she says, "So, do you want to go back downstairs, or do you like it up here?" Or let's just let's stay up here for a little bit. Okay. So, with that scene, um, we'll go back to Shisa. Shisa downstairs. Um, you've kind of been uh, separated off from, as uh, it's now it's just you and Terry too. Kind of chilling. Terry, too, uh, still kind of drunk, but he's been drinking water uh, and kind of getting over it, um, kind of recovering from it. And uh, he is enjoying the... It seems like he's enjoying the company. This seems to happen to Terry, too, a lot, where Terry, one, will leave him to go do whatever Terry, one, does. Um, Terry, two, kind of gets left alone, which is hard for, for him because it's hard for him to communicate, and uh, people kind of see him as unapproachable because of that. I love I love Terry too. Terry too is my fave. <laughs> he uh kind of takes his, his uh bracelet thing that he's that he had on that showed you that he knew something about Vivian, the thing that kind of drew Crocus over in the first place. He kind of takes it off and um, gives it to you, just like hands it to you uh, to look at. And uh, he says, It's fake! Isn't it? Yeah, I think it is. That's too bad. Well, yeah, but, you know, Sometimes things look like they're gold, but it turns out that they're just, it's just shit. He nods, um, says, do you want it? Uh, yeah, sure. Thanks. Uh, again, Terry two nods. 
and says, You're welcome. <laughs> My pleasure. <laughs> oh my goodness um so wait so both crocus and fergus went up for the night um crocus went upstairs uh with someone uh like a, a half work um not sure if crocus is coming back down um fergus is still at the bar with the queen oh yeah 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 okay all right well, I'm just going to I'm just going to sit there with Terry for like until I'm like tired and everybody's going to bed and Terry goes Terry 2 goes to bed. Okay. Um Terry 2 uh kind of still kind of fading in and out of of wanting to sleep on the table that he's um on here and kind of staying awake and talking with you as he kind of dozes off. Um you notice Terry 2 um when he's kind of coming off of his Coming off of his alcohol, he's a bit of a sleep talker, um, because as he's sleeping, um, he starts going like, no, 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 he seems like he's having a nightmare as he's kind of like rolling back and forth. I wonder if there's anything I can do, like, I don't know if waking him up is going to like help if he's just going to fall back asleep and have the same issue. His feathers are kind of becoming, like, matted with sweat. Um, and he just, he seems, like, um, a bit, uh, a bit, yeah, just, like, scared and, and worried. Um, he, he would probably appreciate you waking him up. Okay, I'll wake him up. Okay. I'll just, As like, uh, I'll just be like, hey, 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 are you Okay. As you nudge oh. him, um, he uh, he opens his eyes, wakes up, his, shakes his beak back and forth, and uh, he says, Thanks. Um, it's the curse. Uh, the curse? What what is a cur what is your curse? Um, he kind of tilts his head back and forth, and um, he pulls out a out of his, the inside of his shirt, he pulls out this, like, kind of black leather notebook that's got this raven's feather on it, and, uh, he hands it to you, and as you open it up, it's got a, um, pretty lengthy little couple passages of the Kenku curse, which, uh, doesn't allow them to speak. Um, it's the thing that keeps them from being able to fly. It's the thing that was kind of cursed their race since the, uh, for, for many, many, many years. Originally, they were a race that could fly around and speak as they wish, uh, and then, they were cursed by uh, evil magic, and uh, that generation of Kenku and every Kenku that's been born since then has lost the ability to be able to speak and can only mimic, and also has lost their ability to fly. I see. Does this does this curse upset you? Uh, Terry just nods his head defiantly, like yes. I wonder if there's a way that we could break it. He, uh, he, he kind of, like, rubs his trachea, like, vocal cords a little bit, like he's kind of, his voice is tired a little bit, and, uh, he takes the notebook from you, and in the back of it, there's a lot of empty pages, and he takes a little quill out of his, uh, shirt and begins writing in it, and, uh, he writes a message to you, uh, it says, it's kind of like he's, he's just gonna speak with you with this instead of, uh, using his voices, because there's only so much he can say, only so much vocabulary he has, so he writes this little message and shows it up to you, like holds the notebook up. Um, it says, kind of ironic, isn't it? Question mark. Musician that can't sing. Well, I'm, I think I'm going to, I'm going to write back and I'm going to say, um, I wish there was a way that I could help you find your voice. Um, he, uh, again, is kind of cor corners of his mouth curl in that gentle smile that, uh, only he can make. Um, and he tilts his head in a way that's like, I know you wish you could help. And, uh, thanks kind of, kind of way, just like a, an acknowledging thank you. But there's nothing he said. He doesn't say anything. He just kind of, he's like, I know in that way. Well, I'll say if it makes you feel any better, I think that. You're very interesting and cool and awesome. 
And even though you may, you know, struggle, I still think that you're, you know, you're a really, you're a really like cool person through all of it. Like, um, you have a good heart and I can see it. He begins writing in the notebook and holds it up to you and says, not just Terry's number two. <laughs> no, you're my number one. I like you more than him. Don't tell him though. He, uh, he, he uh, laughs like, Shh. I'm serious. Don't tell him. He winks at you and then crosses that message out of the notebook. <laughs> good, uh, good. That's 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 how you want to treat it. You say, she didn't say anything. I didn't say nothing. So uh, you and Terry too um, kind of bond over that and. Um, She's a, you know, you're not sure, but there is, there is power in what Vivian can do for the people who believe in her and the people who, um, practice music and those kinds of things like worship in a way that is musical. And there may be something you can do for, um, for, uh, Terry too, but you're going to need a wi a big boost in power or you're going to need your mom's help to be able to do it because the curse is strong, but there could be something you could do. I need a harp. That harp would be uh, one step for sure. I don't think I'm going to, I don't know. I would, I think I'm just going to tell, I'm just, I think I'm just going to tell him something along the lines of like, I'm going to, if there's a way I'm going to try it. If I can find a way. He just continues <laughs> to work in you in that way. It's like, I know. Yeah, I know you may think that there is no way, but just because it hasn't been un undone yet doesn't mean that it's not possible. You're a badass! <laughs> Thanks, you too. He goes in for a high five. <laughs> so. Okay, I'm starting to get sleepy as the Shisa, the Shisa is sleepy. Yeah, Terry uh, kind of leads you to the staircase says, I'm going to stay down here a bit. All right. Don't fall asleep on the bar again. <laughs> no promises. <laughs> I'll just walk up to my room. All right. Um, Fergus, you and the queen uh, kind of at the bar have had your couple of drinks. The guards are in kind of prime position to uh, sneak away from as one of them is flirting with someone. One of them is drinking. And then the last guard is uh, in the bathroom. Yeah. Um, I motion to the queen to uh, go upstairs. She nods and, and grabs you by the hand. And uh, I need both of you to roll me a stealth check. I'll roll for her. Okay. So, uh, I'll give you advantage on that because she would know how to sneak away from her guards better than anyone. Okay. Okay. So, with a 19, uh, she also rolled a 19. So, um, you both are able to slip your way away from the bar. Um, the crowd is kind of clearing out as the bar festivities are coming to an end. And um, as you're slipping away up the steps... Um, the voices kind of fade behind you and you make your way to the suite. Um, as you make your way up there, you hear in one of the rooms, as you're walking by to your right, you hear a familiar voice go, Oh, shit. Oh, fuck. And uh, you uh, you hear <laughs> who's working on something in there. Um, you see some, some sparks coming from underneath the door uh, as obviously he's tinkering with something. And uh, the queen kind of gives it a weird look, like, oh, that, that doesn't look good. That doesn't sound good. Um, it's okay if you don't want to do anything. I'm just describing it to you. It's up to, I'm, yeah, I, always, I just I kind of like, to let you I do just, something if you want. I just kind of like shrug my shoulders and just keep uh, leading her down the hallway. Okay. Thankfully, our bedroom's at the other side of, like, at the bottom of the hallway. So we probably, hopefully, won't hear him. <laughs> okay. Um, as you are uh, kind of coming to your room, we're going to go back up to uh, Crocus and uh, her newer friend. Um, so, Crocus, as you're up on the roof, the uh, 
a fork kind of is uh, holding your hands as you're um, up there. The fireflies have kind of come out in this area and are flying around. Um, and in kind of a drunken drunken way, a little bit slurred speech, but not too much, um, they say, is, is it okay if I uh, um, kiss, kiss you? Crocus, Crocus, this is going to be Crocus's first kiss. <laughs> Crocus is like, yeah. <laughs> All right. As you, <laughs> as you share a kiss, the fireflies kind of um, flutter around and um, the sound of the fire from uh, this like little fireplace that's up here on the, on the roof to keep people warm uh, crackles behind you. Um, one person seems to kind of be coming up the steps, uh, a barmaid, the, the same barmaid from before the goblin. And uh, as you have your <laughs> eyes closed, but you can hear her say, I'm just going to leave you to it. And she, uh, she walks back down the steps. Um, and after you share your kiss, um, you hold hands and walk back down the steps. Uh, and as you do, you see uh, Fergus and the queen uh, kind of in the same hallway that you're coming, you're coming down, they're coming up. Um, and uh, you, you both see each other. Uh, do you guys say just, anything uh, or do anything? I just kind of nod and I'm like, Crocus? <laughs> Crocus nods back, Fergus. <laughs> Okay. And I guess we just kind of like walk past each other. Okay. Um, so I'll let you decide. Fergus, uh, from what it sounds like, it sounds like you're taking the queen to your room. Is that what you'd like to do? Yes. Okay. We're going to fade to black on that and say you do whatever it is that you want to do with the queen. Um, and then Crocus, same with you. If you would like to go to your room, you can. Or you can um, just part ways in a kind of a gentle, um, you know, goodbye kind of thing. Maybe see you soon. Um, that was nice, you know, who knows kind of thing. I what? think Crocus would definitely like to come visit the library mm -hmm. to see if we can find more information. But um, I think they'll part ways there. Okay. She gives you a hug at the top of the steps uh, and next oh. to your room. And uh, they kind of caress your cheek a bit and give you a kiss on the cheek and says, you know, kindness is the sexiest thing. <laughs> She kind of smiles. Sorry, sorry, librarians. <laughs> <laughs> she giggles and, and like almost like, <laughs> like and then she she backs away nervously and runs down the steps after she giggles. Off to bed. <laughs> <laughs> and that's where we're going to end today's session. So we will pick that up next time uh, with the morning and uh, what you guys would like to do, where you'd like to go, those kinds of things. Well, that was a fun session. Oh, that was sweet. <laughs> that was probably the most role play centric session I've ever run ever. Uh, that was that was a lot of fun. We're getting good at it, all of us. <laughs>